Hello, my name is Leticia Donovan, and I will be your host for today. Welcome to today's webinar, EMC Design Consideration to Maximize Performance and Compliance. This webinar will be recorded and available on demand for future reference. Please submit your question using the panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Today's agenda, we will cover the following uh, topics. Uh, electromagnetic interference and electromagnetics compatibility. We will also cover what is EMI shielding. Um, we will then discuss the EMI shielding market and the growing challenges that exist in that space. Uh, we will then cover design consideration and we will conclude with an overview of Chemtron Limited EMI shielding products. For today's webinars, we have two um expert speakers joining us uh sam robinson who is an account manager at e connectivity sam has an engineering background in the aerospace defense and marine data communication and subcontract electronics manufacturing sector and has 20 years experience in sales and emi shielding industry including 10 years experience with chemtron limited Sam then earned his degree at Coventry University with a Bachelor of Engineering in Manufacturing System Engineering, and he's, an, and he's a member of the Institute of Engineering Technology. Also joining us is Kevin Washington, who's an account manager at E-Connectivity. Kevin has an engineering background in the aerospace, defense, and marine sector. Kevin has 28 years of sales experience and 18 years experience in the EMI shielding industry with Chemtron Limited. Kevin currently looks after a major UK account and also support the Swedish distributor. Previously, Kevin had 10 years sales experience as business development manager in the telecoms industry with SAP Power Systems, part of Alcatel Nokia. We hope you enjoyed today's presentation. And without further ado, I will invite Sam um, to continue today's presentation. Okay, thank you. With the increasing demand for smarter and more connected components, engineers face the design challenge of keeping up with the needs of industry. There's an increase in wireless devices, increasing the number of signals. There's an increase in power density, creating increased heat and noise. There is an increase in data speed, creating more heat and noise. And there is growing regulation of EMC compliance. There's an increase in electrification, and the growth in EV vehicles. So as a starting point, we need to understand electromagnetic interference and electromagnetic compatibility. Electromagnetic interference is a form of pollution that can affect electronic equipment that is not protected from it. Think of it as an electromagnetic smog. EMI can cause effects ranging from annoying noises on your car radio to serious accidents when safety critical equipment is caused to malfunction. Electromagnetic compatibility is what our customers need to achieve. This is the ability of a device, equipment or system to function satisfactorily in its electromagnetic environment without introducing intolerable electromagnetic disturbance to anything in that environment. For radiated emissions, EMI shielding can be achieved by using materials and components that will create a Faraday cage around the electronics. This can be created at the enclosure level where the outer enclosure becomes a Faraday cage. This can be created at a module level by creating a smaller Faraday cage within the enclosure, or this can be created at the PCB level by using shielding cans to create a Faraday cage around an individual component or a group of components on the PCB. There is an increased need for EMI shielding across the market sectors. This slide shows some of the drivers in each sector causing this increase. In the automotive sector, growth, there is growth in EV power management and advanced driver assistance systems. In the data comms sector, there's an in increase in 5G infrastructure, enterprise servers and hyperscale data. In the military sector, there's an increase in communication systems, and command and control systems. 
in aerospace, increase in data and communication systems, aircraft instrumentation and power management. Industrial, we have increase in power electronics, machinery and robotics. In renewable energy, we have increases in wind, solar and tidal energy. And in medical, we have increase in medical devices, medical imaging and lab equipment. All this, this all leads to a number of growing challenges. There's an increase in, no, in number of electronic systems and increase in communication equipment are producing an ever more crowded environment of EMI pollution. Increases in electronic speed and frequencies make EMI shielding a more challenging problem. As systems become more complex with multiple electronic subsystems, ensuring overall system performance requires these subsystems do not interfere with each other. A good example of this is an automotive vehicle, which contains many different systems. Consumer expectation is that electronics will be available in all environments and situations. For example, it's now expected that a mobile phone should be usable in a hospital. And there's an increase in legislation and EMC directives. One of the key components used to achieve EMI shielding for radiated emissions is the conductive EMI gasket. There are many types of gaskets available, so we will now discuss the design considerations for choosing an EMI gasket. This will be the design stage, gasket compression, shielding effectiveness, dust and moisture sealing, galvanic corrosion, and regulations and compliance. EMI gasket mounting should be considered early on in the design stage. Trying to retrofit a gasket on a flange that wasn't designed to take one will narrow your gasket options or be unattainable and some redesigning may be required. As a general rule, the more land area available to fit the gasket will give greater options. Different types of application will require solutions using different types of EMI gasket. For example, a typical cabinet enclosure will require a soft and flexible gasket to allow for low closure force and wide tolerances such as conductive fabric over foam gasket. An application such as a military shelter will require gaskets such as knitted wire or metal fingers. Small devices may need gaskets such as conductive elastomer O-rings or form in place gaskets. To get good contact between the gasket and the enclosure, a certain amount of compression needs to be applied. This will vary depending on the gasket type and the application. The assembly design needs to be sufficiently rigid and to have sufficient bolt spacing to ensure that the gasket is compressed along its entire length. A good example of this is shown on the right hand picture. If this is not considered, then bowing between the fixing locations may occur. This will reduce the shielding performance of the gasket. This is illustrated on the left hand picture. Different types of EMI gasket require different levels of closure force. For cabinet doors requiring several meters of gasket strip, a very low compression force gasket will be required unless the cabinet is of robust construction and the door is hydraulically operated. Conductive fabric over foam lip seals offer the lowest compression force as the gasket deflects. Beryllium copper fingers can also be very easy to compress but can suffer damage through snagging and broken fingers. Sponge or hollow tube type gaskets such as knitted wire over a rubber core offer medium forces. Solid silicone rubber seals loaded with conductive particles or wires will be the hardest to compress, but will also offer a good dust and moisture seal. It is important to consider compression limitation to avoid over compression, which can cause damage to the gasket. The recommended compression range varies depending on the gasket type. For conductive elastomer flat gaskets, this is 10 to 20%. It may be possible to design compression limitation into the assembly. However, if this is not possible for flat gaskets, it can be incorporated into the gasket. One option is a compression collar, which is bonded into the hole location. A second option is to fit two compression studs either side of the hole along the centerline axis of the hole. This slide shows typical shielding effectiveness for different types of EMI gasket. There is a variation in performance between the materials and a variation in performance depending on the frequency. The knitted wire mesh, um, this achieves H field shielding down at 10 kilohertz. However, the performance starts to fall off above one gigahertz. Conductive elastomers offer over 100 dB shielding performance over a wide frequency range, up to 10 gigahertz. Fabric over foam offers, a offers shielding over a wide frequency range, although it has low performance in the low frequency magnetic field. 
and beryllium coppers offer high performance over a wide frequency range. Conductive gaskets can offer shielding effectiveness of up to 120 dB. However, it is un this is under perfect testing conditions. High contact resistance between the gasket and enclosure can degrade or negate any shielding effectiveness of the gasket. High resistive passivation finishes or oxides on the gasket mating surfaces will cause the gasket to fail, as there will be little or no conductive path between the gasket and the mating surface. This is particularly a problem with smooth surfaced gaskets, such as conductive fabric over foam, as only small amounts of pressure can be applied. Aggressive rough finish gaskets, such as wire mesh, will penetrate the resistive finish, but these may not be suitable for the application. It is therefore important that particular attention is paid to the mating surface cleanliness and that the surface has a good conductive finish. Many enclosures, as well as having to meet EMC requirements, may also need to meet an IP ingress protection rating. Metallic gaskets such as beryllium copper fingers and knitted wire mesh will not provide dust or moisture protection, so an additional rubber seal will be required to provide this. These can often be incorporated as part of the MI seal, but can make the gasket wide, therefore requiring more land space for the gasket. Conductive fabric over foam gaskets will give adequate dust protection, but moisture can wick along the surface of the material. Conductive elastomers will provide excellent dust and water sealing. Um, this can be achieved up to IP68, dependent on the assembly design. When two different metals are in contact with each other in the presence of moisture or more so in salt spray, galvanic corrosion will occur, surface resistance will increase and shielding will be reduced. It is therefore important to try and match as closely as possible the conductive gasket metal to the enclosure metal on the galvanic scale. For example, a nickel coated enclosure in contact with a nickel coated graphite and silicone elastomer gasket will be a perfect match. However, at the other end of the scale, a silver or copper based gasket in, cont in contact with an aluminium surface in a salt spray environment, corrosion will rapidly take place, causing a breakdown in the conductive joint as the potential difference between the two materials is great. This corrosion reference chart is available on our website. It was developed about 20 years ago between Chemtron and the MOD. The chart shows the suitability of different gasket materials and surface material combinations, depending on the environment that the equipment is to be used in. There are many EMC standards and regulations in existence, and the applicable standards will depend on the type of equipment and the country it will be used in. For example, in Europe, the EMC directive specifies re requirements for the control of emissions and immunity standards for all electrical and electronic products. In the US, all commercial non-military electronics are subject to FCC regulations. For military products, in the US, the standard is MIL STD461, while in the UK, the standard is DEFSTAN 59411. So it is important that you understand the EMC requirements that you need to achieve for your specific application. So we can now look at the key takeaways from the design considerations. If we look at the what, we need to consider the EMI shielding and gasket requirements early in the design stage. There are many parameters to evaluate to select the best EMI gasket option, and there is no single EMI gasket type that will be the best option for all applications. If we look at the why, to ensure that the design meets the EMC requirements, to ensure that the most cost effective solution is adopted, and to ensure that the EMI shielding solution meets other requirements of design, such as environmental sealing. And the consequences of not considering EMI, these can be EMC test failure, expensive retesting and project time delays. A retrofit solution can often be more expensive and redesign may be required which will lead to further additional cost and further delay. Thank you. We will now look at some of the key materials that are available. These include knitted wire mesh, electrical conductive elastomers, conductive fabric over foam, and beryllium copper finger stock. Knitted mesh gaskets are constructed from multiple layers of wire mesh typically TCS, thin clad copper steel, stainless steel, aluminium, and monel knitted over a central core of silicon sponge, silicon tube, or closed cell silicon neoprene sponge. 
Due to excellent compression and resilience of the elastomer, knitted mesh gaskets are suitable for shielding of doors and cabinets. Combination mesh sponge gaskets and knitted meshes bonded in parallel to a closed cell sponge elastomer. This combination provides excellent electromagnetic shielding with good environmental protection and an environmental sealing level of IP65 should be achievable depending on seal arrangement and mounting pressure. The sponge elastomer should be facing the weather edge of the box or enclosure. The seal can be supplied with pressure sensitive adhesive to facilitate mounting of the gasket. Combination gaskets are suitable for sealing enclosures, doors and lids, removable cover plates, and as an interface gasket on vent panels. Electrically conductive elastomers offer excellent shielding and environmental sealing. They are offered in a range of materials and outlines to meet various applications. Nickel coated graphite loaded in silicon, fluorosilicon, and flame retardant UL94-V0 silicon offers economical shielding performance with good corrosion resistance. Silver coated aluminium in silicon or fluorosilicon. This provides excellent shielding performance and corrosion resistance, particularly when used with aluminium surfaces. It is relatively light in weight. Silver coated copper in silicon or fluorosilicon. This provides superior shielding performance with extremely low volume resistivity. Fluorosilicon offers additional benefits of chemical, fuel and oil resistance over standard silicon. The materials can be extruded in continuous lengths in many different profiles and can be also molded as sheet and die cut or molded as a component. O-rings offer a most cost effective solution as in most cases little or no tooling is required. The minimum cross section available as an O-ring is one millimeter. For die cut gaskets, our state of the art CNC knife, knife cutting machine offers a quick turnaround time for finished parts. As an option, die cut gaskets can be fitted with a conductive adhesive backing to aid assembly. Oriented wire shielding materials consist of monel or aluminium wires chemically bonded and embedded in solid silicon, silicon sponge, or solid fluorosilicon, and oriented perpendicular to the outer surfaces. The wire density provides 140 point contacts per square centimetre. This combination provides excellent electromagnetic attenuation through low, low resistance wire contacts on both sides of the gasket. And in case of solid silicon, pressure or environmental sealing to IP65, depending on seal arrangement and force. Fluorosilicon material is suitable for applications where contact with oil and oils and fuel are likely to occur. Silicon pressure sensitive adhesive can be applied to sheet or custom parts as required. The recommended compression, maximum compression is 10 to 20% of gasket original height, and this can be controlled by compression stops or collars, as over compression is likely to over compress the wires, leading to a decrease in surface contact. Generally, this type of gasket is not recommended for repeated opening and closing applications. Conductive fabric over foam, is a range of EMC gasket materials using electrically conductive fabric materials wrapped over a conformable sponge core. The soft sponge and fabric combination provides a very low compression force, typically a tenth of the force required to compress an equivalent metal mesh gasket. The fabric is a fine weave of polyester plated with copper nickel, nickel finish. This allows the fabric over foam product to provide a very high level of shielding. The electrical conduction is also high enough to enable fabric over foam to be used on grounding applications for small devices, such as PDAs, laptops and mobile phones. The copper and nickel fabric cover has also been designed to be robust and abrasion resistant and can withstand up to 100,000 repeated wipe cycles with no measurable change to the performance of the part. The polyester is ripstop woven, which reduces the risk of tearing or fraying of the fabric, either in use or one cut to length. Beryllium copper finger strips provide a spring, spring wiping action coupled with low electrical resistance. With these features, the strips provide excellent electromagnetic shielding and earthing when used on closure doors, cabinets and boxes, particularly where frequent opening and closing operations are involved. Finger stop strips are normally fixed into position with high tack adhesive, but some models are available for edge mounting. They can also be soft soldered or resistance welded into position. For maximum contact and shielding performance, the compression should be approximately 25% of the original height. The standard finish is tin or bright copper, but special plating such as nickel or bright tin can be provided to ensure galvanic compatibility.
Shielded ventilation panels provide essential ventilation for cabinets and closures with minimum resistance to airflow while maintaining a high level of electromagnetic attenuation. They are constructed from sheets of aluminium honeycomb and mounted in a frame of extruded aluminium. The complete structure is strong and lightweight and can be surface or flush mounted depending on the frame style. One or two layers of honeycomb can be fitted depending on the application. A single 12.7 millimeter layer will provide reasonable shielding with maximum airflow. When two layers of 6.3 millimeter are fitted, they are offset provide to provide maximum shielding but with slightly less airflow. The vent panel is normally treated with Certec 650, which prevents galvanic corrosion. Frames can have through holes or be fitted with captive threaded fasteners for mounting. Honeycomb vents can also be fitted with an optional dust filter for extreme environmental conditions. These will also have an effect on airflow. Some of the other com key components available are a form in place. Uh, this is a conductive or non-conductive silicon elastomer, which are normally deposited directly to the metal mark by a CNC robot. These are especially good for small, intricate parts. Conductive foam is a low density copper and nickel coated polyurethane foam. Optional extras include a conductive adhesive if needed. Cable glands, these provide EMI shielding for screen cables passing through an enclosure wall. Tapes and adhesives, typically copper or aluminium tapes supplied on rolls available in a range of different widths. Conductive adhesives are designed to be used as a thin bond between two components. Conductive cork can be supplied for larger gap filling. Laminates. Metal foils laminated to various non-conductive backings. These can be die cut to shape or scored and formed into a three-dimensional shield. Environmental sealing, there are various types of non-conductive materials. These can be supplied as sheet, strip, adhesive backed or die cut to various shape. Extruded profiles include cords, tubes, D sections and P sections. Extrusions can be supplied as continuous length or cut and joined into O-rings. Thank you, Kevin. So with all the EMI capabilities that T Connectivity has to offer, we also have an extensive product portfolio uh, beyond EMI capabilities, but we uh, can provide EMI reliability and enabling high performance electronics. <clears throat> Uh, choosing T, what it means to choose T connectivity is um, we are long-term partner of engineering groups and um, different customers out in the market. We are, you know, committed to providing solutions to customer daily challenges, um, focusing on quality products and really partnering with our customers to find cost saving and innovative solutions uh, for their application. We have engineering expertise and proven success uh, with our customers with deep engineering um, capabilities and testing capabilities as well, um, providing certifications and, and supporting our customer in their design requirements. Um, partnering with T connectivity also means global footprints. We have three major manufacturing sites to cover the key region globally, and we offer a strong global sales service for EMI and EMC solutions, including channel partner support. Um, that concludes our presentation. We hope this presentation was insightful for you. If you have any questions, please visit us at t.com or chemtron.co.uk. And I encourage you to follow us on the social media network uh, listed below. And we would like to thank you for your time and wish you a great rest of the day. Thank you and take care.